Welcome to Project Sunday. And today we have a jewelry restoration project for you. And I have been looking for a piece like this so that we could take a look at simple, low cost, easy to do, uh, quick jewelry restoration projects, particularly dealing with vintage pieces. So I found one and now we're in business. All right, when we come back, we will get started. So, let's talk about the piece we are dealing with. Um, I did uh, an internet search on Blackamoor lamps. Um, as you know, I, I have this sort of ongoing project. I'm slowly working on a pair of uh, Blackamoor odalisk lamps with the little, uh, I almost said it too. I almost said it. The little F-A-K-I-R, they're the little guy who goes with them, all part of the set. Um, these were chalkware pieces, very popular in the 1950s. So I was looking them up. I, I tend to look up figural lamps of different kinds every now and then, just to sort of keep an eye on what that market is. And I came across a Blackamoor brooch. Now, we've talked about this before. Um, Blackamoor brooches hit the, the popular media not too long ago when Princess Michael of Kent had worn a Blackamoor brooch um, when for some sort of event that Meghan Markle went to. And everybody decided this was so horribly racist. Well, given the fact that it was Princess Michael, yeah, it probably was. Um, truth is, the woman's father was a Nazi. She is known to make horrifically denigrating comments about people of other races. Um, and she actually wrote a book advocating eugenics. So... But that doesn't mean the brooch is inherently racist. It just means that Princess Michael gets out of bed in the morning, and yeah, that is a racist remark waiting to happen. So, was that her intent in wearing the brooch? Well, I can't say, but if I had to bet, I would say, yeah, sure. Because this woman is pretty much a disgrace to the British royal family. But but that's okay, because she's also gone on record saying that basically their lineage is crap next to hers. You know, she's the real royal, their trailer trash. Uh, what are you going to do? Everybody's got a relative like this somewhere. Most of us just, you know, kind of hide them in the family room and only haul them out for Thanksgiving dinner. But the brooches were never intended to be racist. Um, they were uh, initially made in Italy. Uh, they were just staggeringly beautiful, very valuable, jewel-encrusted, gold-covered, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they were depicting the uh, Venetian uh, princes of African descent. So this was certainly not intended to be a racially derogatory image, but, oh, Princess Michael, by the way, she was the one who said she didn't understand why everybody was so upset when Prince Harry was strutting around in a Nazi uniform with a swastika. Now, now, now you kind of get that because that just sort of reminds her of dad. Why would anybody take offense at that? But yeah, okay. Um, 
somebody like that, anything they do is, is, and she opens her mouth and she is insulting someone's ancestry. So, no. The reality is the brooches are just beautiful pieces of jewelry. They were not meant to denigrate anyone. Um, and so when I found a, a very cute little Blackamoor brooch, I thought, mm, we have a restoration project. So I'm going to do what I did last time. Tell me if this works for you because it, it does seem to. Most of the comments have been, yes, I get it this way. I'm going to show you the entire sequence of events. Then we'll talk about what steps I took and why. And then we'll show you again. So let's take a look at the slideshow. <laughs> It had everything I was looking for. It had good bones and torn up paint and one of the little sequin eyes was damaged. And Yes. So that first picture shows you what I purchased. I paid $12 for it. Um, the seller said it was a mid-century piece. It's probably actually closer to the 1930s. Those pieces were not popular in the mid-century, but they were popular in the 1930s, and that's what I based this on. So it's likely to be earlier. Um, the piece was $12. Uh, the, after shipping and taxes, it came in at $18 and change. So I thought that was a very good price, bought that brooch. So the next three pictures, again, not my own, this was when I researched, because once you have your piece, you really want to know what it should look like. What are you shooting for in your restoration? Well, these brooches, when Tiffany and Fabergé made those brooches, we're talking many thousands of dollars. We're talking just 
super high end. Um, I looked for pieces that were more in the mid range. Now the mid range for these brooches is like the five to eight hundred dollars. So they were considered very elegant pieces. And even at five to eight hundred dollars, you're not going to get diamonds on these. You know, you might get semi-precious stones and enamel, but you're not hitting the high end. This is, it's good costume jewelry, but it's not high end costume. Um, the three pictures I chose were based on the fact that they were Blackamoor brooches where, with turbans, because my piece had a turban, and I wanted to take a look at that. However, I did look at a number of the higher-end pieces as well, and that I will follow up on later. Um, once I had some sense of what it was supposed to look like, the next step up was cleaning. I needed to get all of the paint off, so I was just dealing with the, the metal. Uh, I removed the little sequin dies. As I said, one of them was damaged. The other one, um, no, I'm sorry, I said sequin. It's actually rhinestone. The other one, because it was a clear rhinestone, I thought gave my little brooch face, which is a very attractive woman, actually, the look of, you know, a zombie, the undead, something about those white eyes just seemed undead to me and gave me the willies. So I had determined I would not be replacing them with clear rhinestones. Um, so those were out, but the pearl was staying. And you may have noticed that after the cleaning, the pearl had lost all its luster. Well, it's not a real pearl. It's like a little piece of glass that was painted with a pearlescent paint. And paint brings me to my next step, which was selecting the paints that I was going to use for this piece. And as you saw, I laid out three different shades of gold. Um, there was one that's called classic gold, another gold that was a little brassier, a little closer to an antique gold, and then a rose gold. And then below that, the colored paint that I was going to use. The pearlescent paint, that, that was the white, that I was going to use on the pearl to recapture that pearly look. And then we had the blue, uh, which is actually an aqua color. This is where we go back to those high-end pieces. Pieces from companies like Tiffany and Fabergé used a lot of turquoise. So that was a color I wanted to incorporate in my brooch, which is why I went with that aqua color. Um, again, comes from the research. Then I, uh, the next one up was the black. I did not use a flat black or even a gloss black. I used something called color shift black. It's a very modern paint and it does change color as you look at it. It's iridescent. And that was something that I wanted to do, which was a departure from some of these other brooches. It was just, that's my own little take on it. Um, the downside is it's very hard to photograph color shift black. The upside is I think it looks pretty. I also put out a red because the original brooch, and when you get a chance to see this again, you'll notice the original brooch had a little hint of red on the face's lips. But none of the high-end brooches I had seen did. So even though I made sure I had a nice, that was cadmium red, by the way, standard artist color. Although I had a nice red standing in the wings, I decided against using it. So next up, after I had my paint samples, um, I cleaned off my brooch and then you saw the, just the plain metal with the dull pearl. That's what it looked like when it was cleaned. 
um, the cleaning supplies were acetone nail polish remover, uh, a cotton ball, and then the doggy toothbrush that I use for getting into little tight places, and also a toothpick in case I had to scrape any built up paint out of the crevices, which in fact I did because those little eye sockets where the rhinestones had been, um, paint had accumulated in there. So then um, you saw the piece stripped down to the metal when the pearl was even stripped too. And then next up was cleaning the pin. Whenever you have a piece of old jewelry, especially a brooch, you want to make sure the pin is clean. They can develop all kinds of, of sort of gunky textures on the surface. Um, oxidation, the patina, uh, and th this will affect the um, it will affect the um, smoothness, the texture of the pin. You want that pin to be perfectly smooth. What I used was a little nail buffing square because you don't need anything more than that. And I just buffed it down. I wanted to get any gunk, any patina, any, anything that, that didn't belong on that pin off because in general, when we wear brooches, we wear them on better clothing. Very few people wander the streets, you know, with a brooch on their t-shirt. So you're going to put something like this in a good silk blouse. You do not want gunk on the pin. But if you're going to put it on a good silk blouse when you're through cleaning off that pin, you blunt the edge. The edge will be at a very fine, very sharp point. You know, if you've cleaned it off properly, then you just blunt it. You pick up the pin just as if you were writing on that little bit of nail emery paper. The reason you want to blunt the tip is because if the tip is very sharp, it will pierce through the threads of your garment. You don't want that. You want a slightly rounded tip so that it pushes the threads aside and goes in between them, not straight through them. Straight through them is snags, is pulls, is you know, a silk blouse ruined. But with a softly rounded tip, like I say, it'll just push the threads aside. It won't damage your fabric. But there is another option for that as well. And that's something I may end up doing with this pin before the smoke clears. And let me show you this. These are magnets. Now, let me get this together. Oh. Let me do that again. There we go. Do you see that one on either side of my finger? These magnets are so strong, they are sticking together with my finger in between. Well, they, they won. They ended up just kissing and going down on the floor. That's how strong they are. These are rare earth magnets. They're very inexpensive. I usually get them in, in you know, a dozen at a time on eBay, dirt cheap. And I will put one magnet on the brooch. Um, Assuming I'm going to do this, I may. I haven't decided yet. Remove the pin and then glue one magnet to the brooch. The other magnet will go on the underside. And that will allow me to wear the pin without damaging a fabric at all. And as you could see from, you know, the magnets on either side of my finger, they will hold even through the lapel of a winter coat. So that was something I wanted to show you because it's one of my favorite little tricks to make old jewelry work today. Because very often the old clasps are um, bent or damaged, broken. This is a super easy way to get around that. 
All right, we'll get off that digression and we will get back to the painted brooch. Um, it was a very easy matter to paint the brooch. Uh, it was just like coloring in a color book. You know, you paint the face black, you paint the turban gold, you paint the feather blue. And then I went over the feather with a little bit of extra gold just to kind of highlight it a little. And because I didn't want it to look quite as cartoony as I felt it did when I bought it, when it was just yellow. I, I wanted a little more interest there. I painted the little pearl as well with that iridescent pearl paint. And I think we came up with something that looked very much like a little pearl. And then finally, um, the eyes. As I said, those clear rhinestone eyes just gave me the impression of Dawn of the Dead. Did not like it, gave me the willies. So I got some brown uh, rhinestones. And these were um, two millimeter. I, I measured the uh, eye sockets, two millimeters. Uh, they were relatively inexpensive, but much more expensive simply because I was buying a few of them. If, uh, if I had gone off to a place like Michael's and just bought a bag of little two millimeter rhinestones, I probably could have gotten a thousand of them for the price I paid for that little sampling. But, you know, I got what I needed. And then I popped the little rhinestones in. Now, some of the other things that I did was um, I went over the gold turban and the little turquoise and gold uh, leaf with clear nail polish. I did not do that to the black face because I didn't want to interfere with the color shift paint. But I did want to put a little extra shine on this. So here is the piece. You can see it in my hand. So, all right, there we go. And also, it's a little easier for you to see what the piece looks like holding it here in front of this camera rather than taking a flash picture. Um, that iridescence on the black, uh, it is, is sort of playing off the gold on the turban. Um, that is just uh, a highlight on the piece. That's not... The whole piece is black there. So the things that you see are just the lights playing on it. Um, and we have brown eyes, which I think are a little more authentic than the sort of creepy clear rhinestones. But here is my piece. I think that for a piece that once I factor in all of my costs was still under $30. I am very satisfied with this. So let's go back and let's take a look again at that slideshow so that you can see what happened now that you know what I did on each step. <laughs>
Now you can do this with all kinds of pieces. Any kind of painted jewelry, you can remove all of the paint. Acetone nail polish remover is all it takes. The paints that I use were acrylic and even things like the gold, which as you can see, is nice and bright and shiny. The pearl has a little iridescent pearly look to it. Very easy to do. These paints are readily available. Most of the paints I used, I got at Michael's. I think the pearl paint, oh goodness, I've probably had that for about 20 years. Um, and that probably came from a craft store. Very easy, very simple. Um, the brush that I used um, was, I, it was a set of 25 brushes for $5 that I got at Michael's. It wasn't even, oh, and I did that on purpose because I know you all know I have teeny tiny little brushes for painting features on dolls' faces. No, I made a point of not using my special sable doll brushes. These were package of 25 brushes from Michael's and uh, $5, yes. So I guess that was about like 20 cent, a 20 cent brush is what I used for that. And you can use whatever size you're comfortable with. Um, I chose one of the smaller sizes, but I could have just as easily gone up a larger size. So simple. And once you start doing this and you acquire a few basic colors, cadmium red, by the way, if you're going to redo jewelry, I would say that should probably be your number one purchase as well as a nice gold color. But over time, as you redo a number of pieces, your paint collection will increase as long as you are careful to clean off the lids and close your paint containers carefully. The pearl I used on that, like I said, it's 20 years old. Um, that is the same pearl paint I will use to retouch uh, old doll jewelry, basically. So that's something that's been in my doll paint kit for decades. Uh, the cadmium red that I did not use, by the way, that's my base color for Barbie lipstick. Um, I, I usually mix it with some other things, but that's my base color. I've probably had that one for 20 years too. So once you get started, before you know it, you will have a whole collection of little paints. And keep in mind, most of the paints only cost two or three dollars a bottle, and you can often get them for a lot less than that on sale. So, welcome to the world of jewelry restoration. Dig out those old painted pieces and let's see what we can do with them. So, if you like this, let me know in the comments. We can do more types of jewelry restoration because I have picked up a few pieces, things like, for example, rhinestone brooches, where what I need to do is remove the rhinestones and then repaint the backs of them because they've lost their little silver edges. So we can do that sort of thing if you'd like. Um, small, simple, quick, cheap restoration projects. Okay, have a terrific day, everyone. I will see you all next week. Remember, book club is Thursday night, starting Friday morning. We are back into the thrifting and project videos. All right, have a great week, and I'll see you later.